let's get started. So welcome everyone. Um, this is first. I, I think this is first time for everyone except you two, right? Is everyone else's first time here? Oh man! All right, good, good. Uh, this is Learn Teach Code. I'm Beej. I'm a software engineer at a company here. Um, Learn Teach Code has been around for about eight or nine months. Uh, we do free programming education. We're not any sort of formal organization yet. We're just people who like to teach people to code. Um, and I want to mention W Coding. W Coding is our partner. We're actually in W Coding right now. It's a programming school. So if you're like, oh, the free stuff is too slow, um, you can actually go to them. They have paid classes that are multiple times a week, and it goes a lot faster. Um, but if you want to stick to free, we meet once a week uh, for each topic that we cover. Um, we do Java, Python, uh, web, server-side JavaScript, and Linux. Uh, and we're looking to add more if we can find more places to host events. So if you know anything about that, just talk to me later. Um, so today is our beginner crash course. Now, I was very particular with the name crash course. We're going to go really fast, OK? Um, the purpose is to just get you an idea of, is this something you want to pursue further? Um, so today we're going to build Pong. Uh, does, does anyone not know what Pong is? Oh, man. Oh, my soul. Oh, God. So this is Pong. It's an old, old, ar I guess, Atari arcade game. Uh, it looks, oh, man, he is not. OK. It looks like this. We are going to build something like this today. Um, it will be two players. You will be able to go up to your friends and be like, play this game with me. I made it. And it'll be awesome. Um, so yeah, we're going to build that today. Very simple. But it covers uh, most of the basic programming concepts. We'll be covering things like variables, basically how to store data, functions, how to execute things in a repeated, easy manner. Um, Conditions, if this, then that. Uh, loops, how to do things over and over and over again. And uh, actually, wait, are we going to cover loops? I don't remember if we'll cover loops, but we'll find out. And uh, objects, which is how to represent things in code. Um, so let's get started. Uh, everyone has processing installed. If you could open up processing and everyone's out of screen like this, correct? Yep, yep. All right. Um, so first, uh, unfortunately with programming, there's, uh, this really important concept called black boxing. Okay. So black boxing is you have a, you have something, you have a thing, a box, right? And black box is when you don't know what's inside the box. You see that there's a thing, you don't know what's inside it. You don't know how it works. Okay. You can put something in and you can get something out, but what happens in between? Don't know. There's a lot of that in programming. Uh, the technical term is abstraction, OK? Um, but I'm also going to apply that same concept to the way I teach this stuff. There's going to be some things where I'm going to say, hey, this is really complicated. Just accept that this does this. Don't worry about why yet, OK? We'll cover that later. All right, so please bear with me. Um, so first off, in processing, uh, Oh, right, I should explain what processing is. Processing is uh, based on Java. So if you want to learn Java, this is perfect for you because it uses the same syntax as Java. And processing is often used in academia for people whose focus isn't necessarily programming, but they need to accomplish things with programming. Um, it's geared towards visualizations. So if you want to put something on a screen and you need the full power of programming, this is one of the easiest ways to go. Um, so let's let's get our uh, if you if you press this this uh, arrow right here that is the run button the play button and you should oh I guess they changed how it worked of course they did okay then we'll skip that for a moment um, but that is how you run what you have in what's called your sketch right basically the code that you write here and then this will stop it so let's get our first sketch going so I would like everyone to do something that looks like this. And I'll explain what it is in a moment. Oh, 
we're going to go kind of backwards out of necessity. Hey, welcome. Uh, there's one spot over here, or we can grab another chair. All right. Okay. So this is something, uh, so this is what's called a function. We are defining a function. You can think of a function as a body of code represented by a single name. Okay. So this right here is the name of the function. The function is called setup. Okay. Processing calls this function. It takes this function and it runs the code inside of it when you first start running your sketch. Okay. Uh, this right here, what's in between these curly brackets, is said to be the function body. This is what is inside the function. When you say, hey, computer, run my setup function, whatever is in between these will then be executed. Okay? Um, don't worry about these yet. Don't worry about this yet. Just worry about the name and the curly brackets. Okay? Now, this size uh, determines the size of your window. Processing creates a new window where your graphics and such will show up. Uh, size is a function that processing has already defined that you can use. Okay, So we're actually defining a setup function here, but we're using a size function here. Okay, um, These parentheses are, they surround the inputs to the function. Remember how I said there was a black box? You give it inputs and you get outputs. The parentheses are the inputs. Okay, So whatever is in between these parentheses are input to the function. I also have a typo here. Um, now the size function uh, takes in a width and a height. Okay, And this is how large your window will be. Now, since this is everyone's first time, and why, where's my cursor? Uh-oh. Oh. Huh. Okay. Um, there's also something you can do. Oh, and every statement must end in a semicolon because it's based on Java. Not all languages do that, but semicolons, you will learn to hate them. Uh, the reason they do semicolons is you can do multiple lines on one, or you can do multiple statements on one line. And so having semicolons tells the computer, hey, end this statement, do a new one. Okay, so running this will create a window. Oh, here it is. That is 1,024 pixels wide and 768 pixels tall depending on what your computer is like um, depending on what your computer is like this uh, this may be very small this may be very large it depends on what your monitor is set to okay um, now how are you going to remember all of that well programming has a wonderful idea called a comment where you can write stuff in your code without it being executed as if it were code so we can take notes in our code the way you do this is a double slash for a single line. And if you want to do multiple lines, you can do slash star, which is shift eight on your keyboard. And then you can end it with star slash. Whoa, and that looks terrible. So let's add a couple of new lines. There we go. Um, now, when it comes to comments, I strongly encourage you to write your own comments. Write something that you will understand. Um, when you're working with a team, you want to write things that will be more understood by a larger audience. But since this is just for you and you're just practicing, just write in there whatever you want. If you want to write in Hangul, if that's your first language, you can do that. It doesn't, whatever you want. Okay. Um, so that is that. So we have a window that is 1024 by 768 pixels. Okay. Now, uh, if we look at Pong again, did I close it? Of course I did. Uh, what am I doing? 
Pong. Pong looks like this, right? What's the background color? Black. So processing has another nifty function called background. And we can just do this. Oh, I should save. That works. OK. Now you'll notice that earlier, the background was a kind of gray. Now it's black. Why is it black? Um, oftentimes, with when you're talking about display on computers, uh, you're talking about emitting light. Okay, So when you don't emit any light, that is black, that is darkness, there is no light. Uh, if you emit all of the light, that is white. Right? So if we were to do, and uh, in many languages, uh, oh, I don't want to go too deep into this, but uh, oftentimes the maximum value is 255. There are reasons for that, don't worry about it yet. But if we were to do 255, we would get a white background. Okay. Um, but we want it to be black because we're doing Pong. Um, there are ways to get different colors. We'll cover that in a second. But if you just give it one input, it will be grayscale. Okay. So zero being black, white being 255, and then some gray in between, whatever you pick. So feel free to play with that if you want. Uh, good. Then. Uh, the next thing we want to do, if I can grab my reference real quick. Where's my reference? OK. Ah, yes. So that, that sets up our basic, our basic sketch. OK. Um, now, this setup function will be run when processing first starts your sketch. OK. But what if we want to do animation? Right? When, if we do something only at the beginning, nothing else will happen. It will be static. Okay. Processing has another function called draw. Looks kind of like this. Let me add some new lines so this is at the top of the screen so people in the back can see. Okay. Now I have to look up the reference real quick. Where is it? There it is. Yeah, okay. Um, so draw runs every single frame. Okay. So if we want things to be animated, this is where it's going to happen. We define what happens in the draw function, and then processing every frame will run that function. So we can do something like draw a rectangle on the screen. Uh, processing has this function called rect. Uh, let's do something like this. Uh, let's just start with that. Okay. And if we were to run this, you'll see there's a little rectangle on the screen. Yay! OK. Um, now, what are all these numbers? Uh, when you're working with graphics, you're working with a coordinate system. OK, so you have x, which is usually your horizontal. And you have y, which is usually your vertical. OK? Um, depending on the system you're using, your zero point may be either in the top left corner or it may be on the bottom left corner. Given these numbers, can anyone tell me where the origin is on processing? Right, I, sh I need to tell you what these numbers mean first. Uh, th these are the x and y. Right? So if our, if our sketch is this large, right, and this is our x and y, and this is where the rectangle appears. Which corner is our 0, 0 point? Top left, yes. Correct. Um, so this is, this is x10, so 10 pixels from the left. y10, 10 pixels from the top, because the top left is our origin point. Okay. And then this is width, and this is height. Right? Am I being not crazy? Okay, so this is 100 pixels wide and 100 pixels tall. Okay, feel free to play with these to get different sizes of rectangles. What's up? Um, 
I wrote this. <laughs> Enter or did you hit run? At the top left hand corner. Thank you, Richard. Yep. Don't forget your semicolons. Don't forget your semicolons. Um, where is. Oh, I closed it. Okay, cool. So that draws a rectangle on the screen. Now, uh, which order do we want to do this? Okay. Ah. So, so that's great for, for having a static image, right? But Pong is a game. Pong is interactive. Things are happening. Things are moving on the screen. So we need, we need to be able to move things on the screen. Uh, we need some way that we can keep track of the position of things so that when it draws those things, it knows where to draw them, right? Right now, if I put in 10, that value will always be 10. I cannot change it. It is a constant. But we want something that is variable, something that changes. So in programming, we have something called a variable. All right. I'm actually going to define it up at the top here. And uh, in Java, uh, let's do this. Let's start with this. Um, this is how you declare and initialize a variable. Um, the way this works is you have the data, the type of data, followed by the name of the variable, and then you can set its value. Okay, um, you can think of a variable like a box. Okay, you have some data. The box has a name. It has a label. In this case, that label is rect x. Okay, and then we're taking that value ten, and we're putting it in the box, and now we can do stuff with this box. Now. Elsewhere in our code, wherever we say rect x, it'll take that value out of the box and use it. Okay, it's called substitution. So what we can do here is instead of um, instead of just having ten, we can put rect x. Now if we do this, nothing will change because the value is still ten. Okay, no change. But this is why we're going to use a variable. This draw function runs every frame. This is being run over and over and over and over again. So that means that we can we can do repeated actions in here. We can say rect x equals rect x plus one. So if x if rect x is initially 10, what is it going to be after the first frame is run? Yes. What about after the second frame? Yep. So what's going to happen then? If rect x represents the x position of the rectangle, and, the, and rect x is going to increase every frame, what's going to happen to the rectangle? Yes, it will move. Oh, they changed that. We don't have to. Awesome. Okay. Uh, in the past, uh, you would actually it would actually look like it was growing, but processing is a lot fancier now. No, I put it before because it hates you. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yes. Um, so, oh, thank you for mentioning that. So, a little bit of magic here. Um, I mentioned earlier that it's data type, name, and then value. Uh, int is a data type for integer, a whole number. Okay, so 0, 1, 2, negative 1, 2, so on and so forth. Not 1.1. One one. Okay, only whole numbers. Uh, so, cool, we have... We have um, we have an x. Let's also do a y. And let's do this. Rect y. Can I make this? Uh, I'm actually going to get rid of these comments so that you guys can see the whole thing. 
There we go. Okay, now if I do something like this, what will the rectangle do? Yes. What's up? What will it do? No, 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 you were going to answer. So if we're, if we're increasing its x and we're increasing its y, where will it go? What will the motion be? Yes, diagonal. Okay. Ta-da. Cool. Um, now, what if... Uh, do we want to do that next? Uh, yeah, let's do that next. So, what if we want to... And I have to grab my reference because they changed it, and I don't... Oh, that's gross. There we go. Okay. Um, now, because this is a game, we want interaction, right? We have we need some way to get user input, okay? See, th what, do we, what do we use to get user input on a computer? We have two things. Mouse and... Yep. Uh, now, with Pong... We're just going to do keyboard because that keeps life easy. Um, m mouse is a little more complicated. We're not going to mess with that. So uh, now we we don't want the we don't want the rectangle to move without doing something on the keyboard. So we can uh, so we need what's called a condition. We want something to only execute if some condition is true. Okay. In this case, if a keyboard button is pressed, then we take some action. In this case, move the rectangle. Okay? So we can do if. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, that's right. Um, so processing does things a little strangely. Uh, we actually need to define a new function. Um, processing has a function specifically for when a key is pressed. So we can do something like this. Okay, just like our other functions. And from within this, we can take different actions. We can say if a key, uh, let's do uh, Let's do Q as our up and A as our down. Okay, so if key is A, did they really do? Okay, then rect x. Uh, let's do that, and I'm actually going to comment these out. Okay, I don't want these to run. Actually, yeah, I don't want those to run right now. And let's not do x, let's do y. And we want this to be... We actually want this to be negative 1. Okay, there we go. And we can also say... Or no, 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 we want this to be... Oh my god. Sorry for all the changes. Not thinking straight today. Okay, should look something like this. Whoop, no it shouldn't. There we go. You saw that. <laughs> You're like, uh, uh. Okay. So what the hell does this mean? Um, if is exactly what it sounds like. If is testing a condition. Okay. These parentheses are where your condition goes. Okay. So whatever is inside these parentheses is the condition that if will check. Okay. Now key is something that processing gives us. It is the key that is being pressed down. 
Okay. And then this double equals. We use double equals to compare if something is equal. We use two equals because a single equals is used for assignment. And we don't want to be confused. So when we're comparing things, we use two equal signs. Okay? And then we're checking if the key is A. Okay? Now, we put this A in quotes for a reason. Because if we didn't put it in quotes, processing would look for a variable or a function called A. Okay? But we don't want a variable or function. We want the data A. So by putting it in quotes, processing will go, hey, oh, this is the A data. Okay? Uh, and I actually made a mistake. I apologize. Uh, it is case sensitive. We want lowercase a, unless we want the user to be holding shift the whole time. <laughs> So many things have changed in 10 years. <laughs> um, so now, oh, and then um, if we press A, Y will increase. Now, if our origin is up at the top, increasing Y is down. A little confusing. Decreasing Y is up. Okay? So A will be down, Q will be up. There you go. So now you should have your first interactive program. Good job. Oh, yeah, so I commented out these two lines in draw. So uh, if you're still getting your rectangle moving diagonal, I did comment these lines so they would not be executed. So if you're getting your rectangle going diagonal down across the screen, actually let me just remove these. We're not going to use that. Okay. Um, now how can we make, now this was really slow when we did this, right? It's really slow. No one's going to wing pong at that speed, right? How, uh, how could we make it faster? Yes. What do you want to try? What do you want to change it to? 100. All right, we're going to go fast. It's going to be like Sanic. Whoa. OK, that's actually more of what I was expecting. Um, although I'm really pissed that they, why did you do it that way, processing? Why? All right. Uh, do you want to teach history? Yeah, we're ahead of schedule. OK. Um, so we're getting a bunch of rectangles on the screen. Um, this is obviously not what we want. Uh, processing uh, changed something. Uh, it used to be where anything that you drew on the screen would stay on the screen. So if you drew a rectangle here, and then you increased this x by 1, the old rectangle would still be there. So it would look like your rectangle grew. Right? instead of moving. Uh, the way that you fix that is at the beginning of every frame, at the beginning of your draw at the beginning of your draw function, you redraw the whole background. So anything that was already on the screen is removed because the background is being drawn over it again. So let's do that. Because I'm tight. Oh, they really changed that. Oh, crap. Or no, that's 100. That's right, because that's how big it is. OK. <sighs> they didn't change that. <laughs> then you have a very skinny rectangle. Um, I'm not sure I understand your question. Oh, uh, that's because. Um, you're asking why you have a very skinny rectangle. So f in the rect function, this is your x, this is your y, that's for position. This is your width, this is your height. Yeah. Um, 
Rect also has some other parameters. So if you enter too many parameters or too many inputs, you'll get things that I'm not explaining. Um, but you can look in the processing reference for that. Um, so cool, we get we get 100. Now 100 is kind of choppy. Whoop, that is not. Ah, what is life? Okay. Um, 100 is actually kind of choppy. This is not nearly as smooth as I expected. Whatever, it'll be a feature. Um, now what we probably want to do is we may decide, oh, hey, I want to... Basically, good programming practice dictates that we shouldn't use magic numbers like this, right? Because if someone's just looking through your code very quickly, they're like 100. Where did 100 come from? Why is it 100? What? Um, so what we can do is we can actually replace this with a, uh, with a variable or a constant. We can say int or final int. Does final work in here? It does. Um, we're going to call it move speed. And I'm actually going to drop it down to 10. Now, final means that the value cannot be changed. Okay? So it's still technically a variable, but it doesn't vary. It's what's called a constant. Okay? So basically, we can now reference this number by name. Uh, the reason you do this is for code readability. You want people to be able to read your code very clearly. So from here, we can now do, once you have this, we can just replace this with move speed. And we should get the same behavior, but now it's much more readable. I did change it to 10 instead of 100, so. OK. Now, uh, we can also, now, now that we're doing things to make our code a little bit nicer, uh, we can also simplify this. Uh, this is a very common thing you'll see in coding. Variable equals variable plus something, or minus something, or times, or divides. Uh, we can actually, there's a shortcut for this. If you just do plus equals, that's the same thing. I'm going to do that down here too. You can do minus equals. Ah. And again, you'll get the same result. OK. I think we might actually be ahead of schedule. Last time I taught this was to high schoolers, so it was a lot slower. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we have we have one rectangle, but how many rectangles are in Pong? Or how many player? Or sorry, you guys haven't seen this, have you? Uh, let me show you what the gameplay looks like. Here we go. Looks like this. No, I want to X. Ack. Ah. So it looks like this. Each player controls their paddle going up and down. And your objective is to get the, the ball to pass the other player's side. The player touches the ball. You get the idea? And these are the points for each player. So when the ball crosses this side of the screen, this player gets a point. When it crosses that side of the screen, this player gets a point. See? Okay. Good old games. Uh, so we need a second paddle, right? These rectangles, we'll call them paddles. That's what they're called in Paul. Like a ping pong paddle. Um... So we can say, so if uh, we have one paddle on, well, first let's make our second rectangle. Mm, wait, let's do, I'm trying to figure out the order of things. Yeah, let's do this. So we have, we have our, um, we have our rectangle, but we want multiple rectangles, right? And anytime you, you want to write code like rectangle one, rectangle two, 
you should stop. Because you probably don't want that. Um, or maybe maybe you want that, but you want to make it... It implies that you might repeat a lot of code. So there are ways to avoid that. Um, the paddle in the game is is an object, right? We're, we're imagining a paddle like, like a ping pong paddle, right? So this, this is a physical real world object. So we can represent it as what's called an object in code. Okay? And then we can make as many paddles as we want, and they'll all behave similarly, but have their own thing. Just like if you were to manufacture a bunch of paddles, a bunch of ping pong paddles, they would all be exactly the same, but they'd all have their own independent positions in the world, right? Um, we can do that with code too. So at the bottom, let's create a, let's create a paddle object. So when you're creating objects, yeah. When you're creating objects, uh, you are defining a class of objects, a category of objects. Okay, so we're going to use the class keyword to define a type of object, and we're going to call it a paddle. Okay, similar to a function, similar to a condition. What is in between the curly brackets is what we're defining for our paddle. Uh, in this case, our rectangle, acting as a paddle, it had an X position and a Y position, right? So we can do this to just say, hey, I don't know what the value is going to be, but I want there to be an X and a Y. Or if we want to get super lazy, we can just do that. That will declare X and Y as integers um, without a value. Technically, integers initially start at zero, but we'll change that later. Okay. So, and we also want it to be public for now. Um, in, I'm only going to cover this briefly, but in programming, in uh, at least in Java, you have uh, different accessors like public, private, protected. So you can say, oh, hey, I want other things to be able to modify this data, or no, I don't want anyone else to be able to touch this data. Uh, for now, we're just going to make it public. So now what we can do is we have our paddle, or we have a paddle class, and we can say some, we're going to get rid of these, or one step at a time. So we can say, I want a paddle object, right? A paddle is now a type of data. We defined a new class of data, a new class of object. So we can say our paddle for player one is a new paddle. And then we can say a paddle for player two. Not bad. So at this point, we can actually rewrite this code. Is everyone with me so far? Am I going too fast? Am I losing anyone yet? A little bit? Might be? All right. What, uh, which parts do, do people need to see? I guess we're good. I don't want to take too much time for questions or we're going to run out of time. This is supposed to be a crash course. But if we're ahead of schedule, so if you have questions, ask them now. You're caught up? Okay, cool. Okay, so we have we have our paddles. We create, or we've defined our class of paddle. Okay, so we're saying here is a paddle. This is what it is. And then we're creating these two paddles. You can think of a class like a blueprint. And you can think of these objects like the buildings made off of that blueprint. Okay? So we define how it should behave here and then we create them and let them do their behaviors. Uh so now let's go ahead and actually we can do this too. So
classes, objects, can have their own functions, right? So we can, so for example, if I had a, if I had a mouse object, right? If I wanted to uh, create a mouse in my code, I could give it, uh, the mouse knows things, right? It has like a color, it has a size, uh, it has a weight. Um, but it can also do things, like my mouse can glow. I love this mouse. Um, but you can also click. You can scroll, you can move, right? These are all actions that the mouse can take. Um, what we've defined here are things that our paddles know. They know what their x is, they know what their y is. We can also define for them actions. So we can do something like give them their own draw function. And we can have each rectangle draw themselves. Uh, let's make them let's make them 30 pixels wide, and let's go with 100 pixels tall. Okay. So now, each paddle knows how to draw itself. So now instead of telling in our main draw function, oh, this is how you draw each paddle, we can just, from our main draw function, just say, hey, paddle, draw yourself. And it'll be like, got it, boss. No problem. So from here, we can just say, uh, player1.draw and player player two. Ah, typing is hard. Okay. Now that works because up here we define player one and player two. And they're paddles. And paddles know how to draw now. Okay. So now, oh, but one more thing we need to do is we need to have our paddles react to our input, right? So, well, yeah, let's just let's just draw this for now. So. You'll see, here are the paddles. Then the top left-hand corner, because we never told them where to draw, we just said, hey, draw. Um, and when you, create, when you create integers, that x and y, their default value is 0. So they're being drawn at x0, y0. Okay? We don't see the other, uh, yeah. But, uh, no, that's right, yeah, that should be good. So that's all we have so far. Okay. So let's let's put our paddles in the proper places. Um, what we can do, yeah, I don't want to complicate things too much. Um, in our setup, we can do something like player one dot x equals let's say ten, and player one. This is in our setup function, by the way dot y, let's set their initial y, let's also set their initial y to 10. And then, I have to remember something, where is it? Nice, okay. And then we can say player2 dot x, now the nice thing, processing will tell us the width and height of the screen. So we can just say uh, player 2 x is the width minus uh, let's say 40. Now I'm choosing 40 
Let's do this. Basically that, okay? So we, we did 40, so it's the width, the right, of the, the right edge of the screen, minus 30, because it's a 30 pixel wide paddle, and then minus 10 more because we want a little space between it and the edge of the screen. So that's why we're doing 40. Um, and then player2.y, let's also set that to 10 for now. Questions so far? Probably many. Yeah. Mm. Correct, because um, you, you could write your code in Sublime and then open that file in processing and run it in processing. But you need to, or th I think there's a processing command line utility too, but that's messy. Um, Um, what's the best way to explain this? So when you're writing code, something is interpreting your code, compiling it, and running it. Um, when you're doing things in Eclipse, it's the Java interpreter doing raw Java. With processing, processing has its own interpreter on top of Java. Yeah. Um, so you can write full Java code and processing will be able to run it. Um, but these these fancy things like size, background, setup, draw, those are all specific to processing. So unless you were to run it in, now you, correct. Correct. Um, now if you do want to write something in pure Java, Java does have graphics libraries that you can use. They're just more complicated, so. Yes. Yeah. It would be, like I said, a little more complicated because Java's graphics libraries are a little more complicated, but you absolutely could do it. Yep. Have you heard of the game Minecraft? No. That's all Java. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of Scala in there, but it's mostly Java. And I think there's some Lua in there too, but the, the engine is Java. Yeah. Uh... So now, if we draw this, you'll see that we have paddles on either side of the screen. Okay? Now that's due to this code right here. So now, if we want, uh, if we want those to move, we have to modify our key pressed function. Okay? So now, instead of uh, rect y, which, when we press A, right, A is on the left side of the keyboard, which paddle do we want to move? What's that? I didn't, I didn't, I heard words. I did not understand them. <laughs> yes. So we can do player1 dot x, okay, and what about q? Same one, right? Or sorry, not X. X would be this way. We want vertical. Player 1.y and player 1.y. Like that? Yeah. 
So now if we run this, we can move the left paddle, no problem. Uh, what if we want to move the right paddle? What would I write? Who's feeling brave? Come on, guys, who's feeling brave? I'm not going to tell you. Someone's got to try first. Or if you need, if, if something's broken and you need help fixing it, tell me. Or if you're experimenting, please keep experimenting, because experimentation is good. So that one is, the one on the right is player two. Because we set its width, we set its uh, X position to the right edge of the screen minus some. So that's player two. Okay. So player two is on the right side of the screen. I should probably be using this more. So what will we write here? It's okay if it's wrong. There we go. The same exact thing? So you're saying if I do if I do this, what will happen? Yes. Uh what do we want to use? P and L? Okay. So is this is uh is this condition up or down? Yes. Oh, wait. 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 Yes, it's up. It's up. So which which letter do we want to use? P. All right. And now if we do this again, how do we make it go down? Yes. Because zero is at the top, so plus is down. And then what key do we want to use? L. Just to be clear. So now. Oh. What? There we go. <laughs> Ooh, is it not? Oh shit, I remember that. So it doesn't it doesn't like both of us doing that. Or it doesn't like Shit, how did we solve this? Any questions? Yeah, what's up? So
Yeah, so if if you're having an issue where it's where it's not moving, like if you did like me and you move the thing and then you tried to Oh, now it's working. But basically you have to huh? Up into nothingness? Yeah. Bounding box. Yes. Yes, we do. You guys are so good. Yeah. All right. Um, so if uh, there's two ways to do this, uh, let's do the simple way. Um, it's not as nice, but it works. So we can say, uh, what we can do is, um, basically, we don't want, if, if the user presses, if the player presses uh, A, for example, hey, come on in, uh, we got a couple of fold-up seats in the back, or if you want to get a fancy seat, oh, here's one up here, no? okay, um, so we can, uh, the logic is so so something to get in the practice of with coding is figure out your logic first before you start writing code right so the logic is if the player is pressing the key to go up or down for that matter in this case yeah let's let's start with down so if the player is trying to go down right and they would go off the edge of the screen we don't want to move okay so we can say or better yet, there's a better way to do it. If the player is pressing the down button, right, the A button, and they're not at the edge of the screen, then we want to allow them to move. Okay. So as long as we're not, he as long as they're pressing the move button and they're not here, we're okay. Um, in conditions, you can have compound expressions. So you can say, if this is true and if that is true. And the way you do this in Java is with double ampersands. Ampersand means and. We do two of them because a single ampersand means another operation that we're not going to get into. So it's two ampersands, just like two equals. Um, and uh, this gets a little bit complicated because if we were to just do uh, player one dot y, where is the player one dot y in relation to the paddle? It's at the top, right? So this is player ah, one dot y, right? So if this is at the bottom of the screen, it would look like this, and we wouldn't see the paddle, right? So that's not good. So we want to check here, all right? So what we can do is in player one ah, dot y plus now here's the thing. At this point, I don't remember how tall the player is or the paddle is, right? Um, that's and I need to go look elsewhere in the code to remember how tall the the paddle is. So that, that suggests eh, something something's not good here, right? I should be able to just keep going. I shouldn't need to like run around and go look at everything. So because the way that we draw our paddles is like this, and that's no good. We can make this a little bit better. So let's let's update our paddle, and let's say um, I'm going to do final because we don't want it to change. We're going to give it a width. And we're going to give it a height. And then we can just say something like this. OK. Does this make sense? Yes, no, maybe.
good, good. So now that we have this, if we go back to our condition up here, we can just say player one dot y plus player one dot height. Ah, that is not my backspace key. Is less than the height of the project. Player one. So now, if the players, if the players pressing the A button, and the the player's uh, height is less than the height of the screen, then it will allow them to move. Let's actually get it. So there we go. Choop. Stops. No problem. Oh god. So what do we need to do here? The same thing? The same exact thing? Without height? So let's 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 stop for a second. So we have our screen, okay? We have our paddle, okay? We don't want it to move past here. So we want it to stop here, right? What is, what is this value? Zero, okay? And what is what is this value? Player one dot y. Yes, sorry, that wasn't. Yes, I should have clarified, but yeah, we got it. Player one dot y. Um, so we want. We only want to allow motion if player one dot y is greater than zero, right? Because if we're here and they want to keep going up, we don't want to allow that. So that's what this does. As long as the player's y is greater than zero, we're OK. So now. No joy. Okay? We can go all the way down, it'll stop. Go all the way up, it'll stop. Cool. Okay, we need to pick up a little bit more. Um, how do we do this for player two? Yep. <laughs> Easy, right? test. Whoops. Whoa. Why did that happen? What? Where'd it go? Where did he go? Ooh, we messed up. All right, someone help me out here. Where did we mess up? Oh, you're right. Thank you. Let's fix that. Uh, so let's do. This is why you comment, kids. Or whoops. Let's also put them in the same order.
So down, up, down, up. It's almost like a Konami code. Okay. There we go. Let's test. Good. Good. This, this now this isn't perfect, but for now it's okay. Questions. Give me a signal when you're caught up. Let's see. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but let's at least take a look real quick. Oh. Yours is not moving. So. Oh, that's actually a default behavior on Mac. Um. Mac does not allow you to do key repetitions, apparently. But if you if you write this into a terminal, it will change it. But it will change it for your whole computer. So yeah. Um, now, if you're very confident in your typing skills and you and you trust that you'll never accidentally hold a key down for too long, no problem. Um, to be fair, Windows users live with this problem daily. So, mm, up to you. But, uh, uh, you would probably want to use, on Apple, there's the automate thing. And you can probably tell it, hey, when you open up processing, run this function. When you close processing, uh, set it to true instead. That'd be my guess. I don't know. I'm not much of a Mac person. Um, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, yeah, yeah. We um. Oh, here we go. This is the processing documentation. Uh, I saw key repeats somewhere. Repeat. There it is. Because of how operating systems handle key repeats, holding down a key may call multiple calls. Oh, yep. Yeah, so it's set by the operating system. 
Yeah, it's set by the operating system. So the if you hold the key down, processing will never even get the message because the operating system is controlling that. So you have to change it at the operating system level. Yeah. Yes, that's right. That's the way I... Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I just don't want to have to... That takes a lot of time. So uh, what I'll, I'll describe it conceptually. We won't take the time to code it. But what you can do is you can track the state of each key. So you can have a variable for like key A, key Q, key P, P, key. You get the idea. Um, and you can say, hey, when key pressed, set the state of this to pressed. And then if the state of that key is pressed, then move. And then there's another event called key released. Um, and then you can check for those keys. And then if key released happens for that key, then you can set the state for that key to false, and then you can stop motion. Um, we can do that towards the end if we have time. So let's get back into it. Uh, so we have motion. We have constraining the top and the bottom. Uh, we still have to do, I'm going to write down what we do so I can keep track of time properly. So we have ball, score, uh, scoreboard, and we have collision. Yeah, right? Anything else? No, it should be good. Cool. All right. In 30 minutes. Let's do it. All right. So we have our paddles. Awesome. But now we need a ball. Uh, so let's go ahead and so we have some paddle objects. Why don't we create a ball object? So let's create a new class. We're going to call it a ball. OK. Now just to review, where is it? The ball is this little thing right here. Okay. Now that can go off the that can go off the edges of the screen, the left and right sides of the screen, but it bounces off the top. Do you see that when it bounces off the top there? It bounces off the bottom too. Okay. So that's behaviors we need to get for our ball. So now just like our paddle, um, our ball has a height, a width, an x and a y. So let's go do that. There are ways to avoid duplicating code like this, but that is not for a beginner course. So for now, we're just going to copy this. Let's make the ball, let's make it 10 by 10. And uh, for simplicity, let's have the ball still be a rectangle. I mean, technically, we could just use a paddle because it's the same exact behavior. But, eh, or no, 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 because, uh, yeah, we'll figure it out. Okay, so I'll really, you can just copy paddle and change the name to ball because it's the same exact code and then change the width and height. Um, now, technically, we could just use, or no, we couldn't because these are final. Yeah. Okay. So now, just like our players, let's create our paddle, our ball. Okay, we're doing this at the top. This line right here. Let's scroll down so you can see it. That's above our setup function. And then let's, we need to create, we need to place our ball in the middle of the screen. So we can say ball dot x, uh, scroll up so you in the back can see it. Uh, this is within our setup function. 
ball.x equals, uh, let's say, the width of the project divided by 2. Um, and then let's also do, we want it to be in the very middle because we don't want an unfair game. So minus ball.width minus 2, or divided by 2. Now, because of the order of operations, we should be okay. Because divides happens before minus. But not everyone remembers their order of operations. So if you want to be super explicit, you can put these in parentheses. And just like in normal math, it will execute those first. It would do that without the parentheses anyway because of the order of operations. But this is just being really, really, really clear. What's in the parentheses happens first, then that. And then let's also set, let's do a similar thing with our ball y. We want it to be in the very middle of the screen. And now if we were to run this, oh, nothing happens. Why? Hint, look at where my cursor is. Correct. So now that we add ball.draw inside of our draw function, you can see a tiny little ball. That might actually be a little bit too small, but eh. do you want to make it bigger? Or are you okay with that? No one really cares, huh? All right, we'll leave it small. Let's be Pong on hard mode. Okay. Um. Now the ball gets complicated. Um. We need to there's there's several states that we need to recognize for the ball. Okay? So when the ball when the ball is heading See, the ball's in motion, right? You see my motion lines? I'm a great artist. Um, when the ball hits the edge here, we want it to bounce. Okay? When the ball goes off the edge here, we want it to keep going, and then that's a point. It's a point for this guy. Right? Um, we haven't even gotten to points yet, but that's okay. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to track the ball's velocity. Okay, Speed, if you remember physics class, speed is rate of motion without direction. Velocity is rate of motion with direction. Okay, So we're going to have, and normally when you're dealing with 2D space, um, just like how we have x and y, we have one dimension and another dimension. Uh, you can have an x velocity and a y velocity, okay? So we are going to add those to our ball because, oh, uh, now the reason we want to track these is because the velocity can change, right? The speed might be constant. It might always be going 10 pixels per frame, but it'll change direction, okay? So this would be negative y, and then when it hits the top, it becomes positive y. Okay, or sorry, there's another state. Where if we have a paddle and the ball hits the paddle, it should also bounce. Okay, so this is what we have here 
is a change in y velocity. Ah. Here we have no change. And then here we have a change in x velocity. Okay? So now that we understand the different cases, now we need to code it. So the first thing we need to do is set the ball's velocity. So let's let's give it a velocity. Um, x velocity and y velocity. Ah. <laughs> Thank you. I swear I know how to type. Um, and I swear I'm awake. So our x velocity, let's let's initially, just for ease, let's just having it, have it head down and to the right. So let's just set it to 10 for now. Actually, let's set it to the move speed, because we have that value, remember? Now, velocity, velocity alone doesn't do anything. It's just a value, right? This right now is just data. We're not doing anything with velocity. We need to take our velocity and apply it to the position, right? Velocity means changing up position over time. So for ease, um, we can just do it within the ball's draw function. We can just say x plus equals x velocity and y plus equals y velocity. So now, whatever the x and y velocity are, the ball will move by. Because immediately after that, we draw it. So what you should see is the ball just dashes off the bottom right of the screen real quick. Let's do that again. See that? Is that a little too fast? Let's 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 change it. Instead of move speed, let's uh let's do a let's do a ball move speed. And let's just set it to 5. How's that? Cut it in half. Uh do we need You know what? We don't even need that out here. Um let's actually not do it up here. Let's do it inside the ball. Because nothing else needs to know the ball's move speed. They only need to know its velocity. But, ooh, this is tricky. But if we put it at the top, if other developers look at our code, it's a lot easier for them to see because it's right there at the top. So it's like, eh. I don't know, what do you think? Top? Let's put it at the top. Sorry for moving things around on you so much. And we're not using rect x and rect y anymore, are we? Yeah, so let's get rid of these. Doink. Boom. And now that we've defined this move speed, let's actually have our ball move by that move speed. Ball move speed be kind of close. Whoa, typing is hard. Typing is still hard. Okay, there we go. So now it's going to move a little bit slower. A little bit slower. That's pretty good. Everyone see that? Okay. So, now, We want to capture these cases. 
So when we, when we have no change, we don't need to do any work. So forget this. Well, for purposes of moving the ball, forget this. For score, we'll worry about this later. Um, now we need to capture this case and this case. So when we have cases like this, we use conditions. So we can do if the ball's x plus its x, or sorry, not x, this is y. Um, if the ball's y plus its y velocity would be less than 0, then what do we want to do? If the ball would hit the top edge here, what would we want to do? Is the... Actually, let's... Yeah. So if... I did things backwards. That's fine. So if we're going this way, is our velocity positive or negative? Yes. So if we hit the top here, what should we do to our velocity? Make it positive. OK. Um, so we can say y velocity equals ball move speed, because ball move speed is positive. We could also, we could then say if y plus width, oh man, crap. So processing has its width. Ball also has its width. They have the same name. That could be confusing. When you're inside a class like ball, you can use the keyword this to refer to the value within the ball. So you can say this dot width, or not width, height, sorry, height would be greater than the processing height. Then y velocity should be negative ball move speed, right? Because we wanted to go back up. Don't 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 worry too much about writing this. We're about to change it. Okay? There's an easier way to write this. Okay? What is the operation that we're doing when what is another way in math to say switch between positive and negative? Does anyone remember their math? I'll give you a hint, it has to do with multiplication. Good. So if, if I have some positive number, right, if I have 5, right, and then I multiply it by a negative 1, it becomes negative 5. If I have a negative 5 and I multiply it by a negative 1, it becomes positive 5. So that's a way we can simplify this. We can say if it's at the top or if it's at the bottom, we can just say take the y velocity and multiply it by negative 1. Yes, thank you. Double vertical line is or. Now, th on your keyboard, this is tricky. The way you get to this is it's shift backslash. Okay, it's the one above your enter key. So shift backslash. All right. That's your or. Two of those. Good? Got it? All right, cool. Good, 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 good. All right. So now, ah, 
What do we do? So this is strange. Oh. <laughs> we have a bug. What is the bug? Can anyone tell me? Notice notice how the ball is behaving. Uh, true, but that's not the bug that I'm addressing. How did we have the ball moving earlier? Diagonally, right? Now, the ball's going like this. So something is wrong with our y velocity. What's happening here is these conditions... Wait, what? Hold up. Oh. But that wouldn't... too early for me to be thinking like this. Uh, what do we got? Hmm? Help me out, guys. <laughs> Need to switch which? Is it though? Because like the the ball's y is not less than zero, and its height is not greater than the height. What is which one? Uh, so this is. Yeah, I think you're right. No, there's a. Uh, there's a uh, no nah. Oh really? Improv? Oh yeah, not 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 in Java, unfortunately. Um That? We're not messing with the pedal class. Let's see. Global. Nope. Reference. Global. Height. Alright. So. Because we don't have a whole lot of time, we're going to do a workaround. Instead of this being width, we're going to call it ball width. And we're going to call it ball height. Or better yet, like you were saying, let's do diameter. Or let's do let's just do size. No, because size is reserved. We'll call it ball size. How about that? Ball size. So let's do this. Ball size. Because we're running, we're rapidly running out of time. Ball size, ball size. What's that? Uh, we can, but then our collision would look funny. Well, I guess not because at I, at the at either point. Oh, but if you hit like the corner of the paddle. Yeah. What? What do we got? Oh. Yeah. Size, ball size. There we go. You can see it bounce. Yeah. Huh? Say again? Yeah. Yeah. 
So what the problem was, was here it was using the ball's height, or this was using the ball's height instead of the entire program height. So it was always switching the velocity. So it was always going positive, negative, and therefore not actually moving in the y direction. So if we change it to ball size, now we don't have a name collision. Ball size and height are two completely different things. And now we don't have a problem. But, the, but you have to make sure that anywhere you see ball width or ball height, you need to change to ball size. Because processing doesn't have a fancy, unless they change that too. Yeah, they don't have a fancy uh, rename function. So what you should have is goes down to the bottom of the screen, bounces up. Okay, so that's good for ball behavior. Now, so we've got this one. This is done. Check. Done. Good. No problem. Now we need to do this quickly. <laughs> um, so if the ball hits the right edge of player one or the left edge of player two, we want to switch its x velocity. Okay? So we can do if x plus x velocity would be ooh, and and if we just did this edge, then it would always bounce whether or not the paddle was actually there. So what we have to check is if the ball is here and would be here. Okay? So that makes our condition a little bit complicated. So first, let's check if it's within here. Or let's do uh, if the balls, of course we're inside ball, so we can just say, holy crap. Okay. If the player's y is greater than player 1's y, okay, so that covers this edge right here, and now the nice part is because of all the semicolons and parentheses and stuff, we can add new lines wherever we want, okay? So and uh, y plus ball size, because Oh, wait, no, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up. Getting ahead of ourselves here. So what we want is, I'm going to erase all this other junk real quick. Uh, we have several cases. So we want when the bottom of the ball is touching the top of the paddle, and we want when the top of the ball is touching the bottom of the paddle, okay? So this needs to be the y plus the height of the ball, the ball size. Okay. And then if the top of the ball or its y is wait, have I got this backwards? No. And then if the top of the ball is above, which would be less than, the player 1 y plus the player 1 y height, or the player 1 height. Okay, so that covers our first condition, covers this. Our second condition, or our second uh, uh, expression, covers this. Okay, and now we need to cover this part, touching the edge of the of the paddle. Uh, so we can do if the balls x is uh, pl basically if the ball plus its velocity would be less than player one dot x no 
then we can change his velo change the ball's velocity. It's a little complicated. Collision is complicated. If you ever get into game programming, collision is complicated. That's actually not so bad. It can get worse, but this is a little easier. Okay. So let's let's verify. So the bottom of the ball is greater than the top of player one. The top of the ball is less than the bottom of player one. And the ball's traveling would be inside here. Yes, then we move. Okay? Good? <laughs> I'm so glad you guys are here. <laughs> So that's that's one condition. We also want to switch the the we also want to switch the velocity if it's for player two. So let's go ahead and wrap these in an equals in a parentheses, okay? Because we want to group this. And the good good idea. So let's test. Uh, but the problem is the uh, I'm going to set his x velocity to negative ball move speed, so it'll go left. Okay. Oh, oh God. Oh, wait, what? Oh, because <laughs> it didn't work though. Why did it come back? Oh, so what happened is the ball went off the screen and it kept traveling. And it's still bouncing up and down. And we're only checking if it passes the right edge of the paddle, not if it does the left edge of the paddle. So what could happen is the ball, if if the ball was like, if the ball was like this, right, heading this way, and if the paddle came down on top of the ball, it would so you could basically have a state like this, and then the ball would switch. <laughs> so for now, we're just going to say that's OK, because we're running out of time. But should try to figure out how to fix that. But for now, we're going to move on. Um, so that works. Now we want to do the same for player two, OK? We're actually doing collision now, so then these two are easy, so we should be okay. So I'm going to wrap this whole thing in parentheses, okay? And then I'm going to do an or. I'm going to put it on a new line just to be super explicit. Then I'm going to do another set of parentheses. And this is going to be a mess. I'm just going to do this quickly. I'm just going to ask you guys to copy it for a moment. So the player two, that should be the same, and this should be different. Uh, so in this case, We have where the ball's bottom is, yep, so that covers, the first line covers this one. Um, the second line, ooh, there's a bug. The second line covers this case down here. And the third line covers this case, right? So if the balls, this would be the ball x plus the ball size, and then the velocity, and then greater than is in this direction. So yeah, we're good. Let's test. Oh, come on. No, come back. That was too slow. Let's make the paddles a little bit faster, huh? 
Let's change the paddle's move speed to 20. Yeah, there we go. Oh. Nope, let's try that again. Actually, better yet, let's just, uh, let's set the ball move speed to positive again. Where is it? Where is it? So that it goes to the right when we start. Yep, cool. Ah. Now, there's a problem here where, um, where we can't actually do both paddles at the same time. We can do that with the key pressed and key release thing. That solves that problem. Um, oh yeah, okay. Uh, but the key pressed and key release thing is necessary for us to be able to use both paddles at once. So, but we're not gonna cover that today. Okay, so now, so far so good. Um, now we need to, so that covers, so we got the ball, we got collision, now we need to do the score and scoreboard, and then we're done. So, let's do uh, end reset, but that's part of score. So let's create two new integers, one for the player one score, one for the player two score. Player one score started at zero. Okay, and now we need to come back to the case. Where the ball heads off the edge of the screen in either direction. Okay. So let's go down here to our ball our ball code and this is compared to what we've been doing this is easy so we say if the balls X plus its X velocity would be less than zero the left edge of the screen ah. then we want player one score to go up by one, okay, or if, now don't forget we want the right edge of the ball, so we need to add the ball size, will be greater than the width of our project, then player two gets a score. Okay, so far so, whoop, only one point. <laughs> All right, we're gonna be a little bit behind. Um, so that covers adding the score. Now we need to display the score. And I have to remember how to do that. That's right, okay. So, what we can do is first, so processing provides a really easy way to put text on the screen. You just use a function called text, but you need to set the size of the text. So in our setup function, we're gonna do text size. We're gonna set it to size 32. That's just a random font size I'm picking. Okay, this is within our setup function. Okay, and then in our draw function, we're going to draw player one score with text, and let's put it at, I'm just gonna put it at, I don't know, 40, because why not? And 40x, and then maybe 10y, uh, yeah, 10y off the top of the screen. And then player two score, let's do width, let's just say minus 80, and also 10 off the top of the screen. These might be odd positions, but yeah, whatever. Ooh, okay, so apparently text draws at the middle of it instead of at the top. So let's add some more height. Let's do something like 50. Let's do, let's actually do 100. 
And let's uh, let's make the text size 64. And then we'll get out of here so the next class can get in. So there we go. Whoa. Oh, so cool. We have it when the ball goes off the screen, the player gets points, but they're getting a lot of points. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's also backwards. Right? Because when it goes off the left side of the screen, player two should get a point. So let's switch that. Okay. So we're switching that. And then we also need to reset the ball's position. Or not. Crap. What's the... Let's do something like this. Again, I'm just being fast because we're late and we need to get out of here. Then... Okay, so now it'll reset when a score happens. Ta-da! There you go. There's Paul. So now, so that you guys can see that. And we're a little bit behind. What's up? Oh, right. Uh, it's just my personal ch Oh. It's my personal channel, but I'm, I don't like the name of my personal channel. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's just really old. Uh, let me pull it up. My channel. Uh, how do I see... If I do this in here... Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take... Um, oh, it has my real name? Whoa. Okay, whatever, that's fine. So it'll be here. Uh, yep, I'm going to put, I'm going to post a link to the video on the Meetup page. Um, you can also message me on Slack if you want to. Uh, and I will also post a link to the final code. I'll have two versions, and I'll have instructions about how to look at the two versions. Um, where Version of where it is right now, as we have it right as it is, and I'll have a version where it's much nicer with like the key press and rele release thing and better collision detection and these sorts of things. So you can compare and be like, oh, well, why would they have done this? I'll also add, oh, before I post the current version, I'll also add a bunch of comments explaining what was done. So yeah. Um, apologize that it was a little bit fast at the end, but that's life. I mean, that's how normal development is. Um, but I hope, uh, I hope everyone at least learned a little bit of something. Uh, like I said, not expecting you to be able to do all this over again from scratch, but it should give you an idea of what programming is like, whether or not you want to pursue it further. Um, again, if you are interested in the Java language, we have Java starting next week, same place, but at uh, 4 p.m. And then uh, we also have Python class on Wednesdays, uh, and we have web class starting, well, it should have started five minutes ago. And... Um, we have uh, and we have a Linux class, but that's different. So if you want to see all that, it's on the Meetup website. Uh, and if you want to chat with me, I'm going to be outside in just a minute. And thank you all for coming. <laughs>